head. Can we briefly summarize what heaven is from that passage alone? What is heaven? He just explained, especially the verse, um, verse four. It says, and God shall wipe away all tears. So that means in heaven, there'll be no tears. No more death. It's a place that this mortal body is not going, it's no, we won't die again. It's only, we we'll only die here on earth. But when we go to heaven, no more death, no more sorrow, no crying, no pain. What a beautiful place to be. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a beautiful place to be. That has explained, no wonder most people, most people, most child of God, most devoted child of God, we don't think things on earth. Serious, why? Because this is, we are not of this planet. And that's what the Bible says. We are not from here. We are living here, but we are not from here. The day you give your life to Christ, you are, you know, you, 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 you do the right things. You are, you, you are, you are a born again child of God. You are not from here because you are of the spirit. Like Pastor said yesterday, we are of the spirit. And because we have a place that is prepared for us, that the Bible calls us no more dead, there should be no death. And where, it said, verse 2 says, and John said unto the holy city, the new Jerusalem, that is called the city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven and prepare the bride at dawn for her. We are the bride. Praise the Lord. So when we go there, when we go to this beautiful place, when we go to this beautiful, wonderful, prepared for his people, for the bride, praise the Lord. And this is a place that's nothing but peace. And all we shall be doing there is to sing hallelujah, is to love. As a matter of fact, one of my mentors says, in heaven when we get there, the only currency that we spend in heaven is that love. Praise the Lord. And that is why we as much as possible to love. And I no wonder the Bible says, love your neighbors. Love, this is what he has given unto us. Because when we started practicing this love on earth, and that's the currency that we shall be spending on heaven. There's no way if I can't get along with you here in her earth, and we are both Christian, we are both child of God, trying to aspire in making heaven, to make heaven, to go to this beautiful place that has been described here in Revelations, if I can get along with you right now, cannot spend the love with you right now, can don't pay attention to what is going on with you right now, how are we going to get, when we get to heaven, are we still going to be neighbors? I don't think so. Because I don't know which heaven you're going to, because the heaven <laughs> I am going, the one I want to be, the, the, the currency that we shall be spending there is love. So I'm as well showing him, getting it ready, practicing it right now on earth so that way when i get there it will be it will be a lot easier for us praise the lord hallelujah my notes, he says heaven is a place of beauty so wonderful to be the one that he described is a very beautiful peaceful place no crime no persecution no death i don't have to pay i don't have to worry about paying my mortgage PGI, right. you won't have to worry about, you know, taking the lights. You know, in Nigeria, people, they won't have to worry about, you know, kidnapping and all these people. Praise the Lord. It's a place of beauty that's made of gold. Praise the Lord. And it's a place of, of holiness. So these are the things that we need to start practicing here on earth. Practice the holiness here. Because when you get there to where we are going, it's it's already part of us. It's something that we are used to. You know, there's no all this little lie here, little lie here. You, a sin is a sin. Those are the things we should stop. We need to start practicing the holiness, living the life, a peaceful life, showing love to one another. And those are the things that's expected of us when we get to heaven. Some people say, well, I don't have to deal with you right now. Well, when 
will get to heaven will figure it out. It's nothing to figure it out because those are the prerequisites for you to make it to heaven. And that's one of the things we shall be talking about tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It says a place of holiness and impeccable glory. Wow. I could imagine how that place is going to be. Let's open our Bible to Revelation 21, verse 27, briefly. The same, the same, the same Revelation chapter 21. 27 verse. Verse 27. He says, and there shall be no wise enter into it anything that deflects, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or make it a lie. But the wish are written in the Lamb's which is book of life. Does he have any, any other translation? If you have an NIV? I have the New King James. Okay, mom, read it. It, it says, but there shall be by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hmm. And, and, my, and my version, ESV version says, mm -hmm. but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who does what wow. is detestable or false, but wow. only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Wow. Any unclean things? What are these unclean things? When I was studying it last night, it, the thing just crossed my mind. Hmm. What are these unclean things? Let's talk about that briefly. Because those are the things, the obstacle for us not to make it happen. Not to make it to this beautiful place. I already explained how beautiful you know, this place is. If you really want to get in depth of this, how glorious this place. When I was reading it last night, honestly, I did not go to sleep till like six o'clock this morning because I, I was just imagining how beautiful this. I'm like, no wonder when you, you know, when when you first give your life to Christ, it's a place that you are aspiring. You just, it, it's just like right there in front of me. As a matter of fact, last night I was thinking, God, you know, what do I have to do? I don't want to, I just don't want to be corrupted. I lay down even until 11. I didn't, I couldn't even go nowhere. I was just thinking in my head, God, let, 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 let it be a place. It, it's a place that's on on cleanliness if you if if you cannot you cannot even the glory is just too overwhelming it's unexplainable when god show you the picture of heaven my sister my brother my daddy and my mommy i tell you you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to have anything to corrupt to stain that white garment that you are wearing praise the lord so what are these things that can stop us because it's it, it, it I, I don't know. It's it's it, explaining heaven. It's 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 so it's it, to me. It's personal. It's personal. It's personal. You have to really, you know, like I just did right now. We introduce it to you. So when you on your own in your own little corner, little time, find time to really find out about this heaven. Let Holy Spirit Himself minister to you because. To me, it's very personal. It didn't really, it, it dawned on me last night that this thing is personal. It's not something you can really teach because if you teach it, if you don't really have that encounter with it, it will not sink in and it will make no sense. Praise the Lord. So Hallelujah. all I'm going to do tonight is to introduce it. I want you your own little time in your own little you know fun time to really dig into it so you can feel because what i'm feeling right now is completely different from from, from what i felt in the past it's it, it's it's a new realm it's a new it's a new revelation so we, we, we it's a personal thing with god i mean with you between you and god so evan but those are the things i'm going to talk about which i'll be talking about tonight is what are these things that can stop us from going to this beautiful place as described in this book of Revelation 21. Anybody? 
Well, when I, I, I um, I'm what can start here? Let's start from the word unclean things. Unclean. You know what? When I look at this other version, it says, but nothing that defiles or profanes or is unwatched shall ever enter it, nor anyone who commits abomination. So, you know, if you haven't repented of your sins, just to kind of break it down, you can't enter into heaven. It says unwashed. And you know that once you become saved, you're washed in the blood. And, and, it, and, and the Bible tells us that if we confess our sins, that he is able to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So you can't go there with unconfessed sins and unforgiveness. You have to be washed, washed in the blood of the lamb. The only thing that's red, blood is red, but when we come out, we're washed whiter than snow. Hmm. So if you're, if you're harboring unclean, unforgiven sins, detestable moral things, or if your name is not recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, you can't go to heaven. Hmm. And once you're once you're saved, you know Second Corinthians says you're a new creature. So that transformation should have started as soon as you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. That's kind of what I get out of. Amen. So, sis, Pastor, so what are the things that the obstacles to heaven? The verse no, yeah. we just read earlier, the the where well, you know the the Revelation chapter twenty one is a very very intense, very very intense and deep chapter. So what are these things, the obstacles? Mom already said, to 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 paraphrase what Mom said is, basically you have to be born again to enter into the he to heaven, anyways, and that's like your first ticket. You have to be you have to be a true born again child of God. I mean that's that is the complete that's the that's that that, that is the best ticket, the your 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 number one ticket to make it there to even to even have your name written somewhere. Praise the Lord. Once you give your life to Christ, you're a child of God, it's a, your first ticket to heaven. But what are these things that can really after giving your life to Christ? That can really, really stop you from making it there. You know, you know, um, just like we, we read in uh, Revelation twenty-one, verse one to eight, and also, you know, Paul said to I think the Hebrews, he says, uh, "Let all let's lay aside all you know this sin, this sin that easily besets us." You know, the sin, the, the, the mother of all sin is a sin of unbelief. Mm. Because the moment you believe in God and you believe in his word, you take it as given. It means you have faith in that word and that word, when you have faith in it, you live by that word. But so if, if uh, someone tells you, oh, you know, I believe in God, but I... I I'm still a sinner. You cannot say you believe in God and you're still a sinner. So the, the, uh, the, the sin of unbelief is basically the mother of all sins. Because if you are told, don't do this, and in the, you know, in the, in, 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 the, in the scriptures, we see there are those things which are the don'ts and the do's. Thou shall not and thou shall. Hmm. So when you believe in what God has spoken. Those mm -hmm. don'ts, don't touch them. Those do's, do them. Mm -hmm. Some people tell you, oh, I'm born again and uh, I'm living a righteous life, I'm going to heaven. You're not comp you haven't done all that God asked you to do. He, you know, the Bible says we should go and preach the gospel. So, so thou shalt go to all the corners of the earth. We are supposed to go and share the word of God. Thou shalt not sin, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal. So it's a, it's a package. So the sin of unbelief sets the umbrella for all kinds of sins. So the first thing we need to deal with is unbelief. We have to, uh, to, do, to deal with that first. And then these other things people do, we talk about every day, lies, you know, 
you know, adultery, fornication, uh, all these will, will be small things to deal with because you first have believed in the calling. You have faith in, this, in, in, the, in the salvation which you first received. So setting aside that sin of unbelief, which easily besets us, becomes the foundation of us now beginning to live the clean life that uh, the Bible says in Revelation, where we just read Revelation 21 and verse 27, mm -hmm. that we, we need to be clean. Clean, mm -hmm. spotless, which means heaven is for clean vessels. Heaven is for holiness. Heaven is not for a place where you'll go and say, oh, I didn't do this in the world. Let me do it in heaven. No. Heaven is a place for holiness. Hallelujah. So Amen. we all agree that heaven is a place for holiness. So those tiny, tiny sins that easily beset thee. Number one, laziness. Let's look at laziness. Being lazy and prayerlessness. Those are one, those are the things, small, small things. Somebody will say, Oh, at least I, I don't kill, I don't commit adultery. Those are big, 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 big sins. A sin, it's a sin. Be he a small little tiny lie. Be he the time you're supposed to get up and pray that you refuse to pray. Be he not showing love. A common notion the Bible says, knowing what is good, you know this thing is the right thing to do, mm. but you refuse to do it. It's a sin. You that you kill 20 people, or you rob the bank, or you commit adultery, and me that knowing what is right, then I have refused to do it. We are, we've committed the same sin. A sin, it's a sin. Laziness and prayerlessness. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. That's another thing we, we talk about briefly. Being lazy. The time is supposed to get up as a child of God to pray. Interceding for one another. Pray for your neighbor, not only for yourself. Don't be selfish. Every time Jesus Christ prayed, he prayed for others, not only for himself. Hallelujah. So you show love, you pray for others, not knowing what to do at the right time. When God, when you, Holy Spirit wakes you up, come on, get up, daughter, go and minister. Come on, get up, daughter. Come on, get up, son. Go and do this. Those are the little, 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 little small things that we do not pay attention to that can indict us to make it to make heaven. Praise the Lord. The people that love the world. Hallelujah. Somebody asked me, actually today, what do you mean loving the world? And I said, hmm, that's a very deep question. I shouldn't even know that we'll be talking about this today. Now I'm throwing the same question to us. Loving the world, W-O-R-L-D. Is it loving, having a beautiful home, having a beautiful cars, having, you know, nice clothes, nice suit, nice dress? Is this, that's the only thing that it means to love the world? Because the person was telling me, well, I'm not, I don't, I don't like none of that stuff. And I said, it's more deeper than that. Loving the world. What does loving the world mean? I'm throwing that question at us. Let's 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 get some deeper, you know, into that. Loving the world, aside from having, you know, love all this stuff that's the world has, you know, brought to us. How could somebody love the world and still? Be, I mean, be in the list of loving the world, be an obstacle, you know, to, um, to heaven. Anybody? Let me, let me, let me say a little something on that. Um, can you hear me? 
Yes, sis. Okay. Okay, so when we talk about love in the world, it's it's right there um, in the Bible. You cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. It is either you are with God or you are with the world. Now, even the Bible also says that the ways of God is mystery to men. Um, the Bible also says God uses the foolish things of the world to prove his will. Oh, yes. Now, if... Let me give a typical, like a typical layman's um, easy picky example. When you say love the world, as Christians, it's okay to have nice things. As a matter of fact, you, you were created into the world to enjoy the nice things God has put there for you. It's there for you to enjoy. But when you say love the world, it becomes a problem when those things are more important than your mission on earth. And your mission on earth is what God has called you to do right from your mother's womb. And you can only find out by believing and serving God. Now, establish that you serve God. What it means to serve God and also love the world is you. You. Most people do prayers and say, God, this is what I want. I want you to help me get this. But the ideal prayer is let your will be done in this. If it is not your way, let it go. But when you insist on your own physical, mental, body pleasure, above what God says in any situation, no matter how small, even a simple thing as, where are you? I'm on the way, I'm coming. And you know, you're sitting in your house. You're not even in your car yet. Simple things and you think it's nothing. You're beginning to confirm. You're beginning to conform to the world. Now loving the world doesn't necessarily mean you see things and you, you can't sleep, you can't eat because you haven't partied or you can't, you may not party, you may not gossip. You may not even steal. You may not fornicate. You may not do any of those things but nobody can take you away from your TV show. Not even when it's time to have your quiet time. Oh. So loving the world starts with little things. It is not until you do something exquisitely obvious before you are conforming to the things of the world. You see, there's a, there's a thin line between serving God and um, um. serving God and being, and being, and being what was the word to use? There's a thin line between serving God and, and being in your own in your own space, thinking you know it all. So when it comes to things of the world, it's a struggle every day. It's a struggle every day for God to help you. It's not really something you can do on your own. So every day, you, that's why when you wake up in the morning, you put your day in God's hand. So you will not even unconsciously roll into the world thinking that you still have God in it. I don't know if I've explained, but to the little of my understanding, I don't know if I have been able to say it out as I, Think it. <laughs> you, you've done a great job. You you you, you really did. Well, it's 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 not. It's more than definitely. God has promised the wealth of the Gentiles are for Christians, anyways, are for the children of God, are for mm -hmm. us. But it's now, like she said, it's now taking it deeper, serious, more than it should be. Praise the Lord. The time mm -hmm. you're supposed to be praying the time you know of god you are now and that's when you started doing all of things so that means the love of god is nowhere to be found in your life you are not you know compromising that that love you are not you are not letting you are now allowing the things of the world be in charge of your life praise the lord some of us you know some i i, I was listening to uh uh, 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 uh um one of the pastor's wife, one day she was giving a, a testimony. She said until the Holy Spirit hit her so hard that she has to tell her PA the clothes that she's going to wear in the next three days. I mean, in the next for the next one month, that clothes, they will put it together. They will put the name, the, um, the time that she'll be wearing it, and all that stuff. I had latches and the shoe to match, and if it does not match the clothes with the purse, the PA will be in trouble. She said, if that thing, if she walk into her closet, this is her speaking, if she walk into her closet and those things were not, are not in place, she gets really pissed off. As a matter of fact, if you invite her to go to your church, to come to my, to your, you know, to come at me, minister, if all the things that she gave you if it's not, if they are not present, she tells you she won't even show up. 
Mm. Praise the Lord. So it, by the time she said one day she needed to go to one church to go and ministry and all that, and she and the Holy Spirit, she refused to go. Why? Because the, P, the PA, somehow something happened, one of the eyelashes that she was supposed to wear came off. And because of that eyelashes, this woman did not go. Stayed in hotel, came out with story because of eyelashes. She said, while she was sitting down in that little, in that hotel, Holy Spirit visited her. And one of th that same left eye became, she became blind on that same left eye. Praise the Lord. When we take things of God, when you start taking it for granted, it's like you are, you see, there's no other way to explain it that you are loving the whole world more than the love of God. He's one that died for us, for our sin, so that we can be partaker of those glorious, you know, destiny that, that I mean, the glorious place I has prepared for. Lack of love for God, I've explained that. That's one of the other things. That was my, that's gonna be my number fourth, um, number four, um, the fourth point. Laziness and prayerless, number one. Number two, love of the world. Number three, lack of love for God and our neighbors. Not showing them enough love. Remember I said earlier, the currency that we shall be spending in heaven is love. You need to start getting used to it now. So when they step on your neck, they step on your toes, you withdraw the whole body. Is that showing me? that you really truly love, praise the Lord. They step on your neck, they, they, somebody says something about you, you say, you know what, forget you. Like we said last, like two weeks ago, and you just neglect it and say, you know what, forget you. I don't want to deal with you. Well, I'm not going to go there no more. No, it's me. If I mean to come to your church, that's why you do, you do suspect me and talk to me like that. Forgetting that God said, even when they slap you on your right cheek, the next thing you should do, have patience, endurance, praise the Lord, and just come as little small thing they did to you. Oh, she didn't. Did she look? Did she see me enough to see even say hi to me? So, are you saying you are too big to say hi to me? Praise the Lord, pride. Those are little, 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 little things. Be humble to call. Be humble. Let your white garment be spotless completely. Let people see you and say, wow, I just love your simplicity. Carry that greatness. Carry the glory of God everywhere, not only in church. Not only when you are among the brethren, you are so, like we said last week, you are so holy around people. When you get to, when you get home, around everybody else, you are so dangerous that they would rather kill you before they kill you. If they see you and a snake together, somebody will say, oh, no, you know what? Let me take care of her first before I take care of that snake. Because you are even more dangerous than that snake. So let our life align with what we, whom we claim to be at all times. There was somebody I met when I was growing up back then. I was just like 10 years old, 11, just new to being you know, born again and all that stuff. The pastor that introduced me to Christ. I was very young and we, um, we wanted to, um, there was this school that I had applied to. And when I gave my life to Christ, we're not supposed to wear this, we're not supposed to wear this, we're not supposed to wear pants. It was a very strict um, uh, uh, um, um, doctrine. The doctrine was very strict, very, very strict. And my mom, she said, if you don't do this, then I'm not going to pay for your waik. And because of that, I had to stay behind. My mom said, no, you have to do this. At the point, there's one Bible verse that says, honor your mother and your, honor your parents 
But at the same time, this is what the Bible is telling me, don't do this. Do I want to compromise my faith because to be, why honoring my parents? Praise the Lord. It was a very big challenge for me. And my pastor came then. then. He said, you know what? We can still use wisdom. I love the way he simplified everything. It made it so easy. I was like, wow. If this is, if, if this, this is how to really serve God, to make heaven, because my target was all about heaven. Nothing else matters to me, not even my education at that time. And I said to him, if this, the way you, the way you undo these things, then, then, then I have to really serve this God. I am interested as a very young age. And I started reading about heaven. I started reading about it. And that was why I, I, I it's so a lot easier for me to forgive. Because I was the first thing the pastor told me. In order to make heaven, you have to have a spirit of forgiveness, no matter what. No matter what. He said, he said to me, whatever terrible, anything, anybody could do to you, have a spirit of forgiveness, no matter what. If they put a gun onto somebody that you, somebody that you love so well, just let it go. Forget about it. Because that is the one number one entrance to make heaven. Because when you have this luggage in your heart, no, I can't forgive. I can't forgive. If you notice me, every I, I, I try as much as much as possible. I don't, I don't, there's nothing really you can really do that really, if you hurt me and speak about it, it's over. You ask me tomorrow, 99% of the time, I might not remember what you said, what we talked about, what happened, what trespassed, or me, what transpired. Praise the Lord. So let's, as much Hello. as possible, this of the world, let's let it be. Because oh, why? Remember, we are not of this world. We are not of this world. And guess what? This mortal body will come, will go back. We are made of dust, and guess what the Bible says? You go back to dust. But what? Where will your spirit go? And that is what we are talking about tonight. A beautiful place, a glorious place, a spotless place that's on anything that is not clean cannot stay. Praise the Lord. It's a loving, beautiful place that every child of God should aspire. After today's tonight's message, I want all of us to go and start digging into how this heaven looks like. Once you know where you are going, my, 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 my brothers and sisters, nothing of this world will make sense. You just say, you know what? Before even they offend you, already forgive them. Because where you are going is more special. And I don't, we don't want nothing to stain that your garment that you have worked for. Because one little tiny thing is, like I said yesterday, every day, closer, closer to our grave. Every day. And every day is a plus for us to be closer to God. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Disobedience. The book of Titus chapter 1, verse 16. If anybody's there, let's read it. The book of Titus chapter 1, verse 16. And let somebody open to Romans chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. The book of Titus. If you are there, read. And Romans, I will open Romans chapter, chapter 2, verse 7. Anybody, book of Titus? Elizabeth, are you there to read? Um, um, what, it was Titus, um, what? Book of Titus, chapter one, chapter one verse 16. One the word is obedient. And that's very common among the young kids these days. All these young teenagers, all these young adults, even us as an adult, Disobedient to your parents, disobedient to the law of the land. That was one of the things Pastor talked about last week, yesterday, and all this month. We've been, you know, he has been teaching about that. Obey the law of the land. 
obey. If the traffic red is the same red, then stop and rest a stop sign. If it's stop, then let me make it a complete stop. Obey, don't disobey the law. Don't disobey the law of the land. Don't disobey your parents. Don't disobey the, your, you know, the people around you. D disobedience to Holy Spirit. Very, 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 Holy Spirit tells you to wake up and pray for so, 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 so. And you refuse. Why? Because you are tired. Holy Spirit wake you up at 2 a.m. Why? You, you, you woke up, you went to the bathroom, you came back, now you are restless. Yeah, you said, pray for so, 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 so. And because you don't think you needed to pray, you went back to sleep. You disobeyed the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Those are the things that can hinder us to make it heaven. Immediately you have Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is our comforter. It's our best friend. He guides us. That's right. Some people call it um, uh, uh, conscience. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some people never they say it's hey, that's my my conscience. Something tells me. What is that something? Somebody will say, hey, something tells me not to take uh, Highway 41. I just wanted to take the Highway 168 instead. Something. Hallelujah. So when Holy Spirit speak to us, as much as possible, as much as possible, stay connected. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Romans chapter 2, verse, verse 7, briefly. I have that, Pastor Kimmy. Okay, Mom. Mommy. Read. It's, it's her daughter, Janelle. <laughs> yes. Ooh. I know everybody thinks I sound like her. You Romans sound too 2. Much, too much like mm -hmm. her. I'm loving this. Okay, okay Mama, Romans, Romans 2, verse 7, right? Yes. Yes, sir. To them who by to them who by patient continuance is well doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. That's eight. That's eight. Yeah, I'm eight, eight, eight also. Mm -hmm. Oh, eight also. Okay, but unto them that are continuous and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. And it says tribulation and anguish upon every sort of man that doeth evil. People that do that doeth evil, they operate in the evil ways. As a matter of fact, my mom used to say something. If the God of olden days takes him to, to really answer your prayer, but this one, he takes care of you almost immediately. If you do evil, he'll give you your evil reward. Result almost immediately. Praise the Lord. So those people that perform evil, they do it evil, or the Jew first, and also the Gentiles. Verse 10. But glory and honor and peace to every man that wanted good. What an amazing God that we serve. As a matter of fact, people that even do evil, you, you see what you see, you could tell how their lives look like. And the people that's really enjoying peace in life. Hallelujah. So as much as possible, the spirit of disobedience, one of another obstacle for us not to make heaven. Failure to do the will of God. Failure to do, like I said earlier, knowing what is right and you refuse to do it, it's a sin. You know it's right to respect. You know it's right to honor your parents. You know it's right to obey them. You know it's right to pray. You know it's right to show love as much as possible. Even though they don't like you. Even though they don't love you. Even though they plan evil against you. Still show them love anyways. Even though they sit down there backbiting, calling you all kind of names, drag you down, putting your name on the on 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 on, 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 on the mouth. It's okay. You still love them anyways, and let God, the God of our Abraham, the God our faithful Father, take care of them because He just said it right now. He will take care of them. You do evil, he pays you, he, he take care, let him take care of it. Leave the judgment to him. But my own ticket is to love you regardless. 
As long as I'm doing what the Lord has me to do, it does not matter how much you, you say, whatever you say about me, it does not matter how much you me, but no matter what it is, he won't have any stain around me. Once we have that in our mind, let it seek in and let it have it at the back of our mind, knowing fully well, no matter what anybody, no matter what you do to me, it, it's okay. I was seeing, I was sharing with somebody whether they are saying it's okay. She said, Did you say it's okay? What, what does woman to say? To start jumping and crying? Things I can't help. I can't help it. And I'm not going to strain myself just because to make you comfortable knowing it's not what, what am I supposed to do? Just, to, just let it be. Let God invite God to that situation and He will take care of it. So we need to stop whining about things that we don't have control over. If you have control over it, take care of it. But if you can't do it, just let it be. Why worry? Don't worry about it. Let's go take care of it. Do what the Lord has asked you to do and so that way it will not, it will, it will not be an hindrance you know, for us to make heaven. Unbelief, like Pastor said earlier, unbelief Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. When you go home, let's read that. It's unbelief. That's one of those obstacles to heaven. Unforgiving spirits. I said it earlier too. All, all this back, backpack, all these things has got full of unforgiveness, 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 unforgiveness. You know, I don't want to deal with him no more. I don't want to deal with her no more. No, she raped my baby. Oh, she raped me when I was younger. No, I was abused by her when I was younger. Just let it be. Can you go? You can't go back to the past. We talked about that last week. Past glories. Let it be. What are you going to do? Well, I want judgment. I want, okay, I want justice. Okay. Oh, I had to call the police to send him to jail. Okay, he's in prison now. Okay, are you happy? You forgot your judgment. Let it be. The Bible says before you were formed, you already knew thee. Maybe he allowed that for your own testimony to be preached to the world. So that way, whatever you did wrong, your mistakes can be a testimony for other people to live a better life. Maybe that was why God allowed you to be raped in the first place. Hallelujah. It might be so painful. It's a truth. That's the fact. But we need to start speaking it so people can stop. Well, because I don't have a daddy figure. My dad was not in the house. No, all I need to do now is to smoke and start drinking. That's all I know. What a lame excuse. Take it off. If that was the life your dad lived back then, now you are a newborn again. Then look for something positive around you that you want that will change your life. Stop armoring or something that you cannot change. Praise the Lord. Some people say, well, because you are you are this, you are that, that's why you are thinking like that. That's not true. That is not the will of God. We need to start thinking about what the word is bringing to us. Let's now speaking the truth, the word, what's the word of God saying? Not what the culture is saying, not what is said coming out in the in the community. But the community doesn't like me because of my color. The community doesn't like me because of my accent. The community doesn't like me because I'm a woman. No, lame has skills. Community, he has nothing. The word of God did not tell me a black or male or women or whatever this. We are all going to stand before the throne of grace one day. And will be accountable. It's not going to say, well, this one is this one, this one is that. Let's start preaching and start standing in the word of God. What is the Lord saying concerning the situation? Praise the Lord. Those are the obstacles of forgiving spirits and putting a stumbling block on an obstacle to fall into one other's brother's way. Praise the Lord. I don't know if I make that clear a little bit. Let me, re let me reverse it. Putting a stumbling block on or an obstacle to fall in another's brother's way. Maybe you help other brother to fall, to commit sin, to, um, I don't know the best way to explain that. It, it, you know, you, you are just there. You are, you, are not, you are not encouraging the other brother, but you are only, you, 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 your, your life is just, I don't know, you 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 are such a person that 
negativity is your daily daily activities it's what you you what you do to drag people down maybe you might be somebody that just want to you know your life is just to seduce people praise the lord your ways of living is not encouraging other brother or other sister to make heaven your testimony is very wrong hallelujah i don't know the best way to explain that maybe we should let's open our bible to um matthew chapter 18 verses briefly maybe we'll get a better understanding and I, we can leave that one you know for a little bit discussion matthew chapter 18 verse 6 to 7 if you are there please read Matthew. For those of us that just, you know, people that just um that are just joining, we're talking about we've discussed about heaven, you know, how beautiful we describe how beautiful, how did what did the Bible say about heaven? And now we are talking about things, the obstacles to heaven. We say giving your life to Christ, being a child, being a born again Christian is your ticket to heaven. Now you already have your ticket in your hand. How do you keep that ticket? Like you're going to uh, to movie theater and they already give you a ticket. You already, you know, you have to purchase the tickets, which Jesus Christ had done. He did that for us. So now he handed you over the tickets. When you believe in him, you give your life to Christ and, you know, it's there with you. Now the ticket's in your hand. How do you now, what do you have to do to get into that theater room, which is heaven, to watch that movie? Praise the Lord. And that's basically the best way to, you know, that I can, you know, analyze this. We have the ticket in our hand, We've given our life to Christ. Now we are about to enter into the, to the movie theater to watch this beautiful, wonderful, beautiful, that people have been talking about, this heaven that they've been talking about. We have the ticket. In order to keep your tickets tight in your hand, what do you have to do? You cannot just play around with it because it's going to fall off, right? So what do we have to do? That's what we're talking about. And things not to do. You don't want to just throw it. You just don't want to leave it on the floor because some other, another person might you know, grab it and just take off with it. Praise the Lord. So those are the things. So that's what we're talking about. We've talked about unforgiveness. We've talked about the laziness, uh, loving the world lack of love, failure to abide, you know, disobedience, failure to do the will of God, unbelief. Those are the things I've talked about so far. So now, number nine, my ninth point is putting a stumbling block on another, to, you know, you are, you are not helping the other person to grow, but you are, your testimony is to draw that person back from God. Matthew chapter 18, are you there? Can anybody read 18? Yes, six and seven. Um, yes, ma'am. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, if it were better for him that a millstone were hung around his neck and that he was drunk in the depth of the sea. War wow. to the world because of offenses, for it must need the offense come, but woe to him that brings the offense. Wow. Deep. In other words. Wow. Explain to us. Okay, first, if we look at the beginning of the chapter, this is when the little children are around and the disciples were saying, don't bother him. But Jesus uh, uh, mouthed him to come near him. And he said, the faith is like a child. When you believe in the kingdom of heaven, like a child believe and humble yourself. The whole point is being like a child minded in trust, but humility. And those who offend one of God's children who trust in God, it is better that that person cut themselves off than let, because God is going to come and defend the one who offended God's children. Mm -hmm. He says mm -hmm. offense is in the world and it is going to come, but he still warns the person that brings the offense against God's children. Mm. Wow, deep. Any other insights? 
I, 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 I love that passage. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite ones. So that way, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta be, you gotta be very careful. Praise the Lord. It's very, what a beautiful warning. So knowing that still goes back, take us back to what the pastor, senior pastor said a couple of weeks ago. Knowing who you are in Christ, knowing the power that's inside of you, that you are not of this. No, completely, you are. You are a different breed for Christ's sake. They mess with you, they mess with your God. They have to get to Jesus before they can get to you. Praise the Lord. So that is why you, the way you carry yourself, the way you do things has to be different because they have to see the fruit of Christ in you. The one that you are representing, you have to be able, before you even do anything like my, 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 uh, my, uh, um, my uh, our pastor will say, Think about Christ in the first place. What would Jesus Christ do? How would he handle this? Somebody yelling at you, talking about, take a deep breath. Don't respond right away. Take a deep breath. Think through it. Hmm. Critical thinking. What would Jesus do right now? Then that maybe that will help us in handling some situations. Praise the Lord. Can I read my commentary real quick? Yes. At this little point, um, when I read the commentary, the, the footnotes, it says it's talking about humility, how we develop by Jesus to reflect how disciples, Christians treat one another and how we influence one another. To cause one of the weaker ones to stumble is an offense and it's a very serious matter with Jesus. And the judgment is to be compared to putting a millstone around your neck and casting yourself into the depth because <laughs> God cares how we treat ourselves and how we treat one another. But taking advantage of the weaker Christians, God has a, uh, he really despises that. It's a despise in his eyes. Put it Amen. that way. Amen. I like that. I like that. Taking advantage of one another. Yeah. Completely no, no. Let's treat others the way we want to be treated. And will you, will you, would you want somebody else to take advantage of you? No. And that is still takes me back to that, to the love, like, I, like we said earlier. A real, genuine love that passes all understanding, that passes all human understand, understanding. When you really show it, people, when, they, when you start showing it, they call you crazy. And that's the word, the, this new word we use these days. They say, oh, she's, you're doing too much. You, 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 God is not like that. Yes. My God is holy because where I'm going, it's a holy place. So I have to start practicing the currency that we're going to be spending when we make it to heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, the last one, I mean, second to the last, is failure to bear fruit of Christ. Failure to bear fruit. The time you're supposed to preach the word of God, the people you're supposed to minister to, and you refuse to do it. How can a child of God be a fruit? Let me throw that question out there. Help me. How can we be a fruit? How do we bear fruit? What's the best way to bear fruit? Not, not apple fruit, not orange juice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anybody? We live according to the fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Pastor Sophie, you have not said anything. Help me. Guys, um, it's simply by abiding in Christ. Amen. When you abide in Christ, then you bear fruits. Because we cannot bear fruits on our own. It says he's, uh, he's the tree, we are the branch. And the father is the husbandman who dresses the, the tree. So if we are not, if we don't abide in Christ, we cannot, we, the branch cannot bear fruits without being attached to the, to the main tree, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Galatians chapter five, verse 22. Thank you, Jesus. It's a very common verse. 
that most Christians, when you first give your life to Christ, it's one of those things that, you know, that we are, um, anybody there? 525, briefly. I mean, Galatians 522 to 24. And after that, I want to hear from Daddy. Daddy Amakri, then you help us. He said, it talks about the fruit of the spirit, like Mommy, Mommy Diane said earlier. So how, 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 let's, let's talk about this a little bit. It's a very popular, popular, you know, when you first give your life to Christ, you know, you are so vibrant, you're talking about the fruit of the spirit, you know. Joshua, you know what I'm talking about. Elizabeth, you know what I'm talking about. The fruit of the spirit is one of those things. The first thing you memorize from the sun, from Sunday school. How could you now be a, one of these fruits as a child of God? Can I? Yes, sister. Yes. Um, so with the with fruit of the spirit, um, how it how you bear to the fruit of the spirit? Because I remembered when I first when I first um, got introduced to Christ, um, the first things I noticed about fruit of the spirit is the closer, the more you, the more you um, get involved with Christ, the more Christ is in you, the more your character, your reasoning your attitude changes. Amen. You cannot be in Christ and remain the same. Amen. Amen. You cannot be, you cannot be, um, you cannot be a child of God. You cannot be converted and give your life to Christ and you still do things the same way. Amen. Some you might struggle with, but eventually over time, it gets better and better. I remember when I first, um, when I first got introduced to Christ, I used to have a very horrible temper. Very, very, I throw things, very bad temper. But the closer I get to God, I still lose it every once in a while. But now there is a, there's, a, there's a tingling feeling at the back of my mind when I lose it. And I immediately regret my actions. So I'm saying that um, it gets better with time. You cannot remain the same. So we, with God, you begin to bear fruit of the Spirit. Fruit of the Spirit like joy, like peace, like kindness and other things that come with knowing God. So when you're automatically in Christ, the more you grow in Christ, the more you bear fruit of the Spirit. And when I say grow in Christ, the more you spend more time with Christ through praying, through reading his Bible. And then when you begin to produce those gifts, when you begin to have the joy of God, the peace of God, you understand kindness, you understand loving in God's way, then you begin to bear the fruit through men. You begin to attract people to God by your actions. Amen. Begin to attract people to God by your life. Amen. So the fruit of the spirit is, is, a, is the next step is the next step of exaltation of you knowing God. Is the things that come with knowing God. Because the more you know God, the more you are acclimatized with these fruits, the more they begin to yield in you. Amen. Basically, the more you know God, the more you bear that fruit, all these fruits. There is no way you, you are a true child of God having that Christ-like inside of you that people can, people have to be able to tell because you have to have one or two that fruit has to show them when they see you they say wow she's so loving then somebody will say wow she's very it's not she's not only loving her she's very kind somebody will say wow she's very patient wow somebody will say wow i just love her simplicity somebody will say wow the way she carries herself is just it's just are you a christian are you a child of god if you have never been asked then you, your salvation, you need to go check yourself if you are truly bearing the fruit of the spirit. Praise the Lord. Those are the things, I know like she said, you know, we will deal with one or two things, but come on, we need to really sit down and see how, how, how the, 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 the whole process with Jesus Christ, how did, how did he do it? Praise the Lord. Even when you get to the point that he really wants to really turn off, discouraged, you know, remember, even when he wanted to be hung for your sake and for my sake, at the point he said, God, God, if this, this cup, 
Because he said, once you have the Holy Spirit, he will just be there to guide you and tell you, no, my daughter, no, my son, don't do this. I am with you. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we yeah. have, that's, you know, she has already summarized the whole thing. Bearing the fruit of the, of the Spirit, in order to bear this fruit, our work, our characters, the way we speak, the way we talk to others, the way we show love, our humility, our obedience, has to be aligned and let that foot, you don't even have to open your mouth too much because people will <laughs> see that foot. It's only when, it's when your foot is barren, they don't, when you go to, um, to, um, to, the, to the farm, and you see those fruits with beautiful, some will be green, some will be red, some will be yellow. You could tell which one is ripe right away. You could tell which one you are ready to pluck. Praise the Lord. So that's how we, that's how we are. That's how we should be. When your life is being so attractive to others and that, that draws people closer to God, that means you are bearing the fruit. Praise the Lord. And our life will bear so much a beautiful, a tasteful, a tasteful fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not be those people that when you then when they see you, they say, Oh no, your God, I don't want to serve it. They'll say, if that is how your God looks like, and that is the way they, they are teaching you in your church or whatever it is that you, you are following. No, 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 no. I'm as well, you know, I'd rather rotten in hell than to follow. Then you are not bearing the fruit that the Lord is talking about. Praise the Lord. The next, my, my last point is pride of gift of the Holy Spirit can destroy a Christian that does not hinder him from making heaven. The book of Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23. Let somebody else open to Proverbs chapter 16. And 18, then we'll leave the floor for discussion for the next 10 minutes. I mean, ah, wow, it's 7 16. I'm sorry. So then um, we will, we will um, if you have questions or, you know, clarifications, then we'll go, you know, we'll discuss that briefly. Then we'll call Pastor to close this, the house for the Bible study for us. The book of Acts, chapter 12, verse 21 to 33, briefly. Acts 21. Acts 21. Uh, Acts 12, 21. Yes, Acts 12. Yeah, 12, 21, yes. 12, 23, yeah. It says, and upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. Mm -hmm. And the people gave a shout, saying, it is the voice of a God and not of a man. Amen. So. 20, 23, okay. 23, and it, the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost. Wow. <laughs> That's very self-explanatory. That they explain that briefly. Well, I, like you said, the mom, pride. it is self-explanatory. Herod, Herod um, instead of, even if they are praising you, you're supposed mm. to always say to God, be the glory. Be the glory. You know, a um, um, long time ago, a friend of mine, when you give him a gift, instead of him to say thank you, he will say thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so one day I asked him and he told me, hey, I don't, I don't want to give the glory to God. I mean, 
to man. Because when I say thank you, you are actually losing your own blessings from the Lord. So I thank God. I copied him from that day. If, if I do anything and you tell me thank you, I will say thank God. All right. Mm -hmm. That means you are immediately um, ascribing all the glory to the Almighty. Here, Herod was absorbing all the uh, uh, um, all the uh, um, yes. the priests and so on, all the glory. And of course, God was angry. So that is a sign of pride. Praise the Lord. So we should avoid anything that will lead us to pride. Amen. Praise the Lord. Pride is a huge obstacle. God, look at what happened to him. The Bible says he began, he started eating worms. Pride. If you are prideful, hmm, check yourself. Check yourself. Herod, the King Herod, we know what happened to him. And that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. Humble yourself. Amen. Let the spirit yeah. of humility take over. Let the spirit of love. Let's continue to enjoy love. Let's continue to show more joy. Carry that joy out of your belly. Let it flow. Revival of joy. Let the peace. Let people see the peace of God in your life. Where you do things. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Any questions, addition, comments? Praise the Lord. I wanted to say something about, you know, uh, some um, about the presumptuous sins. Sometimes there is a very thin line. A story came to my mind while we were, we were discussing it. The story of uh, Mary and Martha with the Lord Jesus Christ. When when Jesus went there to visit with them, um, Martha Martha was busy serving cooking and cleaning and everything. So she ran to the Lord and said, ah, Lord, wouldn't you ask my sister to come and help me? Mm -hmm. And the Lord told her, Martha, Martha, thou art encumbered with many things. Mm. One thing is more important, and Mary has taken that one. Sometimes in our bid to serve the Lord, we tend to go overboard without listening to the Holy Spirit. We tend to do things on our own, do this, do that, do that, and we neglect the Lord. So it's always good for us to give time to the Spirit of God, have communion, commu uh, communicate with Him, have your quiet time, listen to Him, because when you when when we spend time with him, Moses was was with God for forty days and forty nights, and the Bible recorded that when he came, his face was shining. His face was shining, and the Israelites could not look at him. So when we spend time with the Holy Spirit, He will polish us. He will reveal secrets to us. So, some of those things that we might presumptuous, presumptuously fall into can be averted. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Wow. That was actually where there was a message I preached on that one, I think yes. two months ago. You know, how busy, you know, it's, it's, it's good to serve God. But the Bible says, even Jesus said, I am a jealous God. If you cause him himself a jealous, the time you're supposed to give to him, you are busy taking care of everything else. What Martha was doing, what she did, was she was okay. But what is more important to, at that point was not having everything else. It was to pay attention to Christ. Hallelujah. But she didn't do that. She was busy doing everything else. 
Sometimes we are so busy doing everything else for God. There's somebody that I know very well. She she will say, "Oh, um, I am this in my. If I don't put this thing together, my pastor will not be able to do this. If I don't put this thing together, my pastor will not be able to." One day I asked her. We had a little conversation, and I said, "Do you really find time to pray?" She looked at me. About reading the Bible, as a matter of fact, this woman she couldn't even find one single Bible in that whole apartment. Take one out. But six a.m. in the morning, she's out there at the church. She will come home to eleven p.m. Putting everything else together, but her soul, her soul, is nowhere to be found. No intimacy with the Spirit. She heard about it. But she doesn't even know too much about Jesus Christ. She's doing everything to everybody around her. She's a very oh, she's a very good Christian. She's doing. She's always there, always there, always there. But there's no relationship. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Any, our senior pastor is Daddy on the phone. I'm on the. So I could yield this to him, then we can finish. Sister Makuna says she um do you see have your question before pastor yes. right pick there. it up from here? Yeah. Auntie Makuna. Yeah, I just got my uh my video off because I'm busy being in the background. <laughs> okay, there was a question you say you you wanted to ask. Um well, I, I, there was there are some things that I, I had looked up and they were talking about witchcraft and idols and everything like that that could prevent you from going into the kingdom of God. And so I was just I was just looking at some things on that aspect right there about witchcraft and everything, doing evil. You know, towards people and everything. So, yeah, yeah. I think we dealt with that one. That was why we um. We yeah, read the yeah. That's what. Yeah. So you guys pretty much covered yeah. covered yeah. a lot a lot of things. Yes. Already. Yes. yes. You know, we, but I I could uh, give you some of those um Bible verse too. If anybody wants to write it down, let's read more about it. Then we really, like I said earlier, when I was introducing this topic. This topic, it's, it's not something you can really teach that much. Once you introduce it to the brethren, you need to find time to really dig deep into it. Find out yourself. Because and that's when last night it hit me so hard. I, 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 up to now, I still, I'm, still, I'm still yet not recovered from what I got out of it yesterday. It was just, it was just very overwhelming experience for me last night. So it's not something, it's all describable. I can, I, this, if I sit down here trying to describe it, you might not really get it because uh, you might be thinking she's just talking. I, you have to really dig into it because the way God, the way the Holy Spirit explained and described how heaven looks like. My sister, my brother, my daddy, my mommy, it's a place that we should aspire to be. All these things, the Bible says they are vanity upon vanity. Your soul, my soul, is very crucial and is very precious to God. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Read Amen. more, pay more attention to Holy Spirit. Let him open your eyes and read more about heaven. It's a glorious, a wonderful place to be for an overcomer. And I know you and I, we are overcomers. And I see us making it to heaven together in the name of Jesus Christ. I yield Amen. to Pastor. I'm sorry for, you know, I'm so sorry. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for the word of God that has gone tonight. Yes, this is a very important discussion as a family of God, because uh, ultimately the essence of our fellowship is to, is to make heaven. Uh, while we want to recreate a situation of heaven on earth, but our journey here on earth is a temporary one. 
the ultimate is to live eternity with God in heaven. So every obstacle that will hinder that, uh, that uh, reality in our lives, we will, by the grace of God, the spirit of God, uh, overcome it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He said in Luke chapter 1, verse 17, he said, making ready a people prepared for the Lord. Uh, we are a people that at every time we must ensure that we are ready, prepared for the coming of the Lord. Our, the day we get saved is the day we qualify for heaven. But that, that qualification can be withdrawn at any time in the course of our journey. So that is where the preparation starts. We, we are given a, a ticket for heaven, and we must ensure we hold on to that ticket because there are so many contending things that wants to withhold, withdraw that ticket from our hands. And so uh, we have to prepare and we have to remain ready and relevant and thank God for everything that has gone ahead in the in the book of first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 22 says uh, we should not provoke the Lord to jealousy are we stronger than he in verse 23, it says, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify. So you may think, oh, I'm, uh, is, I'm not committing any sin, but is it really is, is it edifying you as a Christian? Is it expedient? Don't always try to prove your rights. And that's where sometimes at the, at the sake of our love for, for one another. So we must at every time be prepared, live ready. If as much as in your power, like I always say, live peace, peaceably with every man, as long as in your power. Everything is lawful. Legally, you may have that right, but is it expedient? Is it, does it edify? Those are the things we must watch out for as we uh, walk this walk with God, looking on to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Because of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despised the shame, and is thereby seated with God in glory. That will be where we will find ourselves, even at the end of this earthly journey, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every, every Amen. obstacle. Amen every obstacle that the enemy wants to throw out there. Amen. Because uh, the, uh, the devil is, is deceitful. It will not come mm -hmm. as a form of, uh, it will not show itself as a devil. He will think it is okay. Look at when the devil met with Jesus, what is wrong with somebody having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights to be offered food to eat? It looks you know, very sincere, it looks uh, very harmless, but you must, we must be very sensitive in the spirit to know the wiles of the enemy. That anger, the enemy wants you to be angry concerning that situation, and so that he can withdraw the ticket from you. You need to watch out for it, you know, pray for that person, lay Amen. it on God, because 
And one thing I realize that affects many Christians is offense. We take offense. And like I said, offense is always taken, not given. Don't go and take the offense. It is there to be taken. Refuse it. Because the, it is being offered, you, you don't need to take it. Because when you take it, then you own it. And it becomes a cross for you to carry. But that will not be yours in the name of Jesus. Amen. So tonight, we thank you for your word that has come. Uh, it's been very rich. And we ask, Lord, that the entrance of this word will bring more light and understanding onto our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. That as we run this race, that you, we shall be made ready and prepared, even for the coming of the Lord, and we'll be ready as the bride that is ready for the day of uh, marriage of the Lamb in the name of Jesus. Amen. When that day comes, when books and further books shall be written, open, our names shall be found clearly in the book of Lamb in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, King of Glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you for everyone that has contributed tonight. Everyone that has shared their faith to encourage others. We ask that you refill everyone, especially our teacher, and we Amen. continue to grow in the things of the spirit Amen. so that we shall be found worthy of your call. Blessed be your name, Amen. for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thanks for God bless coming. you. Thank you for joining. God bless you. Next week, we shall be talking about restitution. You don't want to miss it. Let's invite others. These are deep things that most times you don't get to hear this on the PP, I mean, on the pulpit at church. And this is the time we should talk about it. You know, let's discuss this. No matter what it is that's going on there, I pray that we will not lose our soul to hell in the name of Jesus Christ. We will Amen. all make that Amen. very, very important. Let's invite Amen. others. It's not going to be nice that, you know, when I get to heaven, I don't get to see you. I want you to see me. I'll be like, wow, they will get to hug. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if if I may just uh, Amen. Quick, quickly add to that, you know, thank God for the topic today. We've seen the obstacles. Now, mm. how do we restitute so that we are back on course? Mm. It, how do we make amends? Because it is not just to know that you have you are in the wrong path. Yes. It is good to know how to get back to the right path. And that is what restitution is all about. And I know that as we all gather to share our spirit-led thoughts, that everyone will be drawn back and make ready, prepared for the Lord's coming yes, in the name of Jesus. The reason why Amen. we are canceling, Amen. of course, we cannot discuss, you know? Amen. No problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say what? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for this gathering. We thank you for the for your spirit. Holy Spirit, as we go this day, let your spirit go with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We a lot tonight about you know the obstacles, you know, how heaven looks like and you know, things that can stop us from making heaven. And so, Father, all these things, we cannot do it by ourselves, but we need you, Holy Spirit, to yes, be with Lord. us. Let our life be the fruit that we preach in the name of Jesus Christ. This fruit of yeah. love, peace, Hello. You know, joy. Let's, when people see us, let them see, they'll be able to identify us. I did, oh, but I'm not covering that easy tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Glory. 
for in Jesus' mighty name, right? we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. See you on Wednesday, you. 6 p.m. And on Friday, 6 p.m. By the grace of God, Sunday worship I'll do Saturday, on this admission. 10, 10 a.m. Digging Deep Bible Study. Okay. And that's um, so I, what wonderful. Did I order? Ah. Probably you would I ordered and that. that's also, Bible I think, last Sunday time, Sunday Megan, Megan ordered Alex, it. That's okay. what, that's what, and that's what happened. And God will help us in the name of God. So I'll, if two is negative, I'm okay with you. Man. I'll see you next time. Thank you, Sister Janelle. Thank you, Grandma. Daddy Amakre, love you. Okay. All right. Sister, Bye. Sister, 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 hello? Uncle Ray's mom is on. Wow. Oh, was sister, I love you. I love I you saw, too. <laughs> I saw Uncle Ray's mom. Sister Maya, Auntie my queen. God bless you. Auntie, <laughs> I love you. See you next week. Oh, okay, sister, Alice, thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, Auntie, you. <laughs> that's, Uncle, that's Uncle Ray's mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sis. God bless you. Pastor Sophie, love you. See you next week. See you Wednesday. Oh. Be safe. Okay.